Hey there, what's up? It's Johnny here and in this episode of the 3C Show, the show that's full of photography love, I catch up with Brent Mayo on the Share Inspire Create Show and we talk about the Fujifilm X-Pro2. Enjoy. Hey there, what's up? It's Johnny here and welcome to another episode of The Sick Show! And as always, I am super pumped to be here and I'm here with my main man B. How are you, my brother? Yeah, really good, man. And really? we've got a special show for you guys today. It's all about the Fujifilm X-Pro2. Da -da -da -da! So we're going to review da -da -da! it. There we go. <laughs> cool, man. Dude, first impressions of this little camera is it is built like a brick. I can't... Beep. House. <laughs> <laughs> it is built tough, man. Like the body, yeah. you can just see it's just metal and it's just solid as a brick. Yeah. And it is actually, I read, it is actually weather sealed. So it's okay. weather water resistant, yeah. weather sealed, which is, it's just, I mean, in hand, it just feels mm. like something solid that's going to last for years. Yeah. That's what I love about it, man. And I, I like the, um, the way Fujifilm makes it like retro looking yeah, yeah. and feeling. You know, it's like, a, it's like an old 70s. Or 80s camera. Yeah. Maybe even before that. And, and the next thing that jumps out at you when you pick up one of these cameras is all the manual functionality. I love yeah. the manual aperture ring. Mm. I love the exposure compensation in a manual and, and the ISO and shutter speed all with manual yeah. dials. It actually, when you get used to it, there's something... There's something... I don't know, man. You feel like you're one with the camera yeah. when you're moving these manual... Yeah. like. And solid clicks too, man, in the dials. I just yeah, love it. And that's kind of weird for you, Johnny, because Johnny's all <laughs> into like touch screen and all the stuff. Yeah, and, yeah. And I'm more of a manual person. I like old to. School. I'm old school. Yeah, And yeah. I like the old school. And even the um, the manual focus. You know, when you push it forward or backwards or how, however it is, when you go into manual focus, it's really cool too. Yeah. Yeah. It feels good, man. It feels yeah. good. And the beauty about it, it's got the retro styling, but it's got all the new features. I mean, the biggest headline feature of this camera is the fact that it's a rangefinder, meaning that when you look through the viewfinder, you're actually not looking through the lens. You're looking down the side of the camera and the side of the lens, basically. So mm -hmm. you're not looking through the front of the yeah. lens. And I think for me personally, it wasn't something I enjoyed. I'm not a rangefinder camera person, um, but I can see the benefits of it. And mm -hmm. one of the huge benefits of it, B, is you can actually see outside of the field of view of your image. So if you're a wedding photographer or you're a street photographer and you're waiting for that action to come in, or even wildlife man like you know if you're mm. i could see it because i mean i did shoot it was it was pretty stationary i have to say the, the goat that i shot in zion <laughs> national park but you can see outside of your field of view of your image and you can see the action coming in so when it mm -hmm. hits you you're ready to go yeah. man and couple that with eight frames per second yeah. this thing is like a machine gun i mean listen to this b wow put that close to my mic yeah Pretty cool. I mean, listen to that. Yeah. That's shooting raw files. Amazing, amazing. So, yeah, yeah man, um, epic. Yeah, and, you know, a couple of the things that I, I still like about this is the, you got the manual uh, focus over here. So you got the manual, continuous, and um, st still focus. So you can switch between still and continuous. So let's just say I'm photographing kids, which I was. I was photographing my daughter and her friend at the beach, and they were, and they were standing there, so I'd, I'd, go, to, I'd go still, I shoot a couple, then I go to continuous when they're running towards me. It's just one click, and you so you don't have to change it on the menu system uh, at the really back, nice. here, which is really cool. But going back to the the range finder, yeah, it kind of freaked me out the first time I looked through it. Mm. You know, because I never shot with a range finder. Um, you know, I, well, we did shoot that other. What was the camera we shot in San Diego? Uh, Sebastian's. What? Oh yeah, the, the Leica. Leica. The Leica high-end mortgage yeah. the rest of your house model. Yeah, yeah the Leica, so you can like afford the, to buy it. Like yeah. the eight, <laughs> eight grand thing, and that had a that had a rangefinder yeah, too. Yeah, I didn't. Dig and that it, was a, you know, other than this, that's the only time I've ever shot with this. Mm. Uh, so rangefinder freaked me out a little bit, but you're right, you can see things coming in and out of the frame that, before you actually shoot them. But what I ended up doing was just switching to the electronic viewfinder yeah, full, all the time. Yeah, I was in yeah. full EVF. If I wasn't using the the um, the LCD at the, at the back for yes. my landscape, I had it in full mm. EVF. And man, it works like any other EVF camera. The only thing that I found that took me a bit of getting used to um, when I shoot my Sony's and other thing is the viewfinder is actually, as you can see, it's right on the left-hand side, this side. I'm used to the viewfinder 
being right in, in the, the middle. middle. So yeah. that took a little bit yeah. of getting used to. But as soon as you get used to that, it, it wasn't a big deal for me. I could shoot this full, I could shoot this thing in full EVF, and I found it to be, yeah. you know, up there with any other mirrorless cameras I've used, mate. It and was what, perfect. what Johnny's saying is the electronic viewfinder over here is actually a hybrid. So you can look through there, but you can also switch it right over here with this switch over here. You can switch it to a full electronic viewfinder. So you're only looking at the sensor where you're looking through the, the lens mm. and you don't actually see anything else. And then it's got a hybrid version where it's showing where you can see through it and you've got the square uh, around it. And if you put it into manual focus too, there's even like a tiny little other square that kind of shows you if it's in focus or not. So, Which is really nice. Yeah. It's like a zoom version of what you're seeing and you can move that around. Yeah. yeah. So um, the other thing I really loved about this too, because for my landscapes, I usually usually shoot like single point focus so I can move it around yeah. and it's got this little joystick on the back here and I absolutely love that because I could just I could just get that little joystick move the point around to the focus so I could focus a third in or focus on whatever I wanted to focus on in my scene and man I, it was so powerful man it's got so it's got phase detection and contrast de detection focus so there's this massive I think it's like seven by seven phase detection area yeah. right in the middle there so I actually found the focus on it was quite good if you mm -hmm. if your subject was closer to the center of the frame it focused really well and fast and man this little joystick it made it so much easier for me to move that point around and absolutely focus on the thing I needed to focus on. Definitely. So it was cool, man. And uh, Fujifilm has definitely improved their focus. You know, there, there was a one thing that was lacking the last time we tested any of the Fujifilm cameras, mm. the X-E2, uh, uh, X-T2. Yeah, X-T1. X, yeah, okay, X-T1. It was the X-T1, yeah. and, and the X-E2 we tested X -E2, before. X-E2, yeah. And you can probably um, find them in, the, in, in our blogs. But I, I found that the, the autofocus was lacking, especially when a subject was moving towards you. And I photograph a lot of kids moving, mm. and, uh, and I need something that's going to track them. And this was a lot better, I found, uh, when I tested photographing my daughter in the surf running towards me and doing handstands and all the stuff. Um, you know, it, it actually grab the focus a lot quicker. And then also what I did at a, uh, at a barbecue is I gave this to a friend to photograph us. And I just put oh, it on. Oh, the photo of you and Stacey? Yeah. We should pop that in, man. Yeah, we'll put that one in. That's a beautiful shot. Yeah. Was he a photographer? No. Or she? No. Oh, man. Dave. I'll tell My you My friend what. Dave, and it was actually after sunset. So the sun had really gone down. It was the last of kind of the twilight. And I said, mm. Dave, why don't you take a picture of me and Stacey, my wife? Because mm. we never get any photos of us because mm. I'm always behind the camera, right? I gave it to him. I get, with this 56 1.2 lens, which I love for portraits, oh, beautiful. it's a fixed focal length lens. So the only way to zoom is to go like this. <laughs> <You're the beast. laughs> and, um, and I just gave it to him. I just said, shoot, shoot away. And, he, and it focused and he shot. It's also got fa face detection, by the way. So it faced, de detected wow. our faces, focused on our faces, and he photographed quite a few images. Some of them were a bit blurry because he was screwing around. <laughs> yeah. But I've got to say, the one yeah. you posted, man, I actually thought... A professional photographer took it because the bokeh is beautiful. Mm. You guys are sharp focused. Mm -hmm. It was absolutely amazing. Yeah, That's and I just shoot at, mm. I think I had it at 2.8. I might have had it at 2.8. I can't remember. We'll have to look. But normally when I'm shooting portraits, I just shoot wide open 1.2. F1.2, super wide open. Shallower the, the better. On the 56 <laughs> millimeter lens, great lens. So we're going to get into some of the lenses? Or yeah, actually, just I just wanted to mention body. one thing about the body, man. Is um, So it's 24 megapixels. That's okay. A, but you know what? I don't know, that X-Trans sensor they've got in there, they've got some sort of voodoo magic, and I say this every time about the Fujifilm stuff. Man, I zoomed in on my landscapes, and the detail that you get from this 24 megapixels is absolutely unbelievable. It blew me out of the water, mate. I, I tell you, I am really impressed. And you're talking about someone who normally shoots like a 42 megapixel camera, you know, and you can imagine there's beautiful resolution in the pixels, but man, I was more than happy with the landscape images I got off this camera, man. So that's one thing. Now, before we get away from the body, I've got to say one thing. I would have liked to have seen, and I know that the X XT2 has that is a flip out screen. B. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't have to flip around all the way. I mean, that's great for vlogging, but you're not going to vlog with a camera like this. But I really like when you get those low perspectives, man. And I'm using the the electronic viewfinder all the time, so I would like a screen that tilts up and slightly down. Because sometimes you've got your tripod high and you want to tilt the screen down, and sometimes you want to tilt the screen up if you're shooting low. Particularly mm -hmm. when I was doing things like with this macro, man. So mm -hmm. that's one thing it misses misses out. For me, yeah. I think, yeah. And and I can um, I'll, I'll second that because I was photographing these mushrooms right on the ground, and I had the camera on the ground, but then I had to put my head in the dirt, yeah, to see the to see the screen and at the back. And Brent's got a pretty big head, so he actually had to <laughs> dig a hole behind the camera so they could get his eye. Yeah, look, up at, look, in is, the hole. look is talking yeah. about a big head. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, cool. So, um, so, so, so some of the settings, Johnny, we should talk about it. So I want to say one more thing, man, yeah, about yeah, the dolls. Cool. There's one other thing that annoyed the hell out of me with this camera, and that is ISO. this. No, yeah, this dual ISO and shutter speed dial. I mean, on the other cameras, they have them separate, man. They have mm. the ISO and the shutter speed separate. Yeah. And the fact, there's so many times I accidentally pulled it up and bumped it, and I just, I, I wasn't a big fan of this single dial for ISO yeah. and shutter speed, man. I've got to say, I would have preferred to have that separate. But man, other than, other than that, and. Um, and the, the tilting screen, man, I, I was really yeah. impressed with what this little camera can do, mate. Yeah, it's it's me a too. beast. Me too. The, other th the one other thing that I would like Fujifilm to do is to be able to shoot raw files on a lower ISO. So I think, you know, so, yeah. so 200 ISO, right, to get raws. If you go to low or auto and it goes to low automatically, it just goes to JPEG. Which is and, weird. And a lot of landscapes weird. that I'm shooting, I'm shooting at 50 ISO because I want to get the cloud movement, I want the, the long exposure images. Or, or, or to take away the low setting. Don't have a low setting. Like yeah. if, you're, if your sensor can only go down to 200 ISO, why even have that low setting? Yeah. <coughs> Excuse exactly. me, but... Because yeah. um, yeah. we're shooting raw. I mean, what's the use of shooting JPEG? And if it automatically goes into JPEG, it's a I mean, yeah. you're screwed. You, you got all these great images. You go back and you're like, they're all JPEGs. Oh. No, I had it in low and not 200 ISO. Yeah. So that's, what, yeah, it is. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure there's some reason. Well, they, they do I, compensate with having the one eight thousandth of a second <coughs> um, shutter speed. Yeah, so it's So fast. you can go like a super fast shutter speed when mm. it's a 200 ISO, but I'd rather go to 50 ISO and have a slower shutter speed. Yeah, yeah. For, for landscapes at least. I mean, yeah. for portraits, it's fine. Yeah, you, yeah. you don't have to ever go below 200 ISO. Mm. It's just the, the problem is if you are in like sketchy light conditions where the light is changing, you, you want to keep it on auto yeah. ISO and you don't want it to automatically go to... So I think we should just wrap up, man. Cool. Yeah. I think we'll, let's wrap it up. So for me, I'm a mostly landscape and nature photographer. Would I buy this camera? Um, th those couple little things, probably I, I wouldn't, man. Mm. And one thing is definitely that dial. It just, it, it just so many times it caught me out, man. Yeah. I've accidentally moved the ISO and the shutter, and I'm sure you could get used to it, but I prefer separate dials for that and not having that little flip screen. Mm -hmm. But I'll tell you what, if you shoot street, you mm -hmm. shoot a bit of wedding, um, and, and you do some portraits yeah. and, and you do another lands landscape every now and then, I think this would be a good yeah, all-round camera. And I mean, if, particularly in this day and age, rangefinder cameras, are, you know, they're not as popular as they used to be. So if you're an old-school photographer that's used to rangefinder, having a hybrid rangefinder mm -hmm. is just going to be epic for yeah. you. So I think, I think, I mean, yeah, for me, for landscape particularly, this wouldn't be the Fujifilm model I would buy. So, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So for portraits, street, I think this is a great camera. However, with street photography, I'd like a flip out screen too, because often when you're photographing people and you, and you want to get those natural shots without mm. them knowing that you're photographing yes. you, like a creepy photographer, right? You can flip the screen up and you can just shoot like this, looking down at your screen and you're mm. not looking right at them and have that eye contact and then they notice you and they might change their, yeah. their behavior, you know, and that's what street photography is all about. It's getting those natural and people don't actually yes. know that you're photographing them. Yeah, so, definitely. Yeah, so that's it. So there, there we go, guys. That's the, the Fujifilm X-Pro2 camera. Um, a great overall camera, the, the X-Trans uh, um, sensor, 24 megs. Um, Hybrid ISO, viewfinder. Oh, ISO 51,000 <laughs> ISO. So, the, so you can be shooting basically in a dark church yeah. without any flashes. One eight thousandth of a second shutter speed, eight frames a second. It's a pretty good camera. Actually, I should say... Um, I was bracketing in one of the most difficult dynamic range places I've ever been, and that was in Antelope Canyon. Mm -hmm. And um, I've blended a few of those images together, man. And I've got to say, this little camera handled it, man. I shot the bracketing, I blended them in, and it caught all the dynamic range. So I was really impressed. And that was handheld. Handheld as because well. Because we weren't allowed to take handheld uh, as well. So I was really, really impressed at what this they've done with this 24 megapixel yeah. sensor, man. It's just epic. It's yeah. beautiful. And it's got the same sensor in it as the X-T2 as well, their other flagship model. So, mm -hmm. yeah, man. Cool. And uh, just a big shout out to Fujifilm Australia for lo so loaning much. us these cameras and these beautiful lenses. I think in the next one, we'll review some of the lenses in the yeah. next show. Yeah, let's do it, man. Cool. Awesome. All right, take care, guys. We'll see you next time. See you later. Peace.